everyone to fabric weaving and plain weave this is marina from frocks and frolics and we are going to demystify all those fabrics for you so that you don't need to be scared when you go shopping now we have to differentiate between three different types of fabrics so the woven fabrics made on a loom then we've got knitted fabrics on a um, knitting machine and then we've got the bonded fabrics which are actually made on a conveyor belt when you purchase your fabric in a shop, it comes in a rule and you say I want a yard or a meter or whatever it is and then you take it home and when you look at your fabric on the side of it, you usually have the maker or the designer printed on there and that's called the selvage. It's the woven edge of the fabric that you are buying. So this is a loom and the threads that run all the way along are called the warp threads. And these threads are lifted up and down by the heddles to make room for the weft threads. And those weft threads are in a shutter that gets pushed through from one side to the other of this loom, right? So in the olden days, or on an old-fashioned loom, it looks a little bit like that. You've got your warp threads on the top and the bottom making a gap through which that shutter can just go through and then they just change position up and down up and down to make the fabric so again when you get your fabric you have the warp running along it and the weft which goes from side to side and that makes your selvage when you're cutting out any fabric you usually put it on the fold that means you just simply fold it over and the selvages on the side are placed on top of each other you also got an arrow on your pattern pieces that indicates the grain the direction you need to put it and this arrow needs to be parallel to that selvage you can also cut out on the bias but the arrow on your pattern piece will still face straight down parallel to the selvage so you only need to put that parallel to know yes this is right i'm going to introduce you now to the plain weave that has a very even surface and looks the same on both sides plain weave fabrics are totally smooth and even usually and so they're very easy to print on and so you get a lot of printed fabrics which are just done in this weave depending on the fiber and the yarn that you use you can make this fabric look hard wearing or very delicate and also when you have more spacing between the yarns it will also determine how thick or how thin it looks and now I want to just have a look at a few examples that you might have come across in the shops for example cotton lawn one of my favorites really good for a beginner very easy to work with it is a fabulous fine fabric and when it is as a plain solid color it almost looks see-through and that's why it's not really used so much in men's shirts obviously but when it's printed it's absolutely super i just love this this is a great one to do it has got not much drapes so any little dress made with it will look absolutely fabulous and it's obviously very nice for for all sorts of things where you don't really want drape the next one I want to talk about is muslin. Muslin was very, very popular in the 18th and 19th century. But these days, especially in America, it's more used to talk about um, a cloth we use to fit garments, to check out whether they are okay or not, when actually that is called calico. The fabric we're using is not actually muslin, it's calico. It's much denser, same weave, but much denser and also was very popular in the 19th century when it was printed but we want to talk about muslin that very lightweight fantastic fabric which originated or some people say is from Mosul in Iraq hence the name muslin and also from Dakar in Pakistan where they really took it to the next level and they actually managed to grow a cotton plant when you took the fibers and you soaked them in the water they wouldn't puff up and in fact they got stronger very much like linen does and it's so unique because they've never been able to um, grow this kind of cotton plant anywhere else and in fact they have muslin festivals there it was eradicated by British rule because what they did is they apparently cut off the thumbs of the weavers so they couldn't export it anymore so the British that made their own could just have their own little bit of an historic tidbit here 
Right, moving on swiftly to another really good one, which is poplin. Poplin actually has just a thicker weft yarn than warp yarn, and that makes it really beautiful. It gives it this structure. It's very often used in upholstery as well, and very good for bag fabrics, etc. But obviously, because it's hard wearing, also for trench coats, you see that a lot. Trench coats, any outdoor coat, if you want to make one, go and look for a really nice poplin in cotton, maybe with a polyester mix. Then another one is gingham. I really like gingham. And that comes when you use medium or very fine yarns and you have two colors that alternate and warp and weft. And where they interlace, it looks like you actually have three colors when you only have two. Very nice to work with. So what do these all have in common? Well, they're easy to work with. Um, they can be washed. It's absolutely fantastic beginner stuff. It doesn't drape very much, but then you don't really want that when you're making skirts and shirts and whatever. Now, one thing I want to point out with plain woven fabrics is that normally you would cut everything out with a grain. But because they are the same, um, either way, they're so even that you really can also put your fabric pieces with the arrow pointing across it. The exception to this obviously is poplin because it has direction because it's got that thicker yarn going through the weft so you don't want to do it there. Anyway, thank you for watching again and I'll see you next time where we're going to do the twill weaves. Bye for now.